Hello everyone and welcome to the Pikmin 2 Emulation Hacking Introduction. So today we're going to walk you through um, the main things that you need to get started in emulation and hacking for Pikmin 2. Uh, so a couple tools that we're going to need. We're going to need 7-Zip, which is a program that lets you um, extract files from uh, compressed files like the 7z format which is what um, the next thing Dolphin emulator it comes in the 7z format uh, so you need 7-zip in order to download that uh, the Dolphin emulator that's the software that will let you play the uh, ISOs which are the GameCube games uh, it can also play Wii games the GameCube Rebuilder, this is a tool that will let us extract the files out of the ISOs, so let, let us extract the files out of the games so that we can hack them, and it'll also let us rebuild it so that we can play it in the emulator. And this isn't needed, but this is my favorite text editor that's free, Notepad++. Makes it easy to um, edit text files which a lot of the Pikmin 2 hacking is editing text files. So for 7-zip, all you do is you download from there, you run executable, and it will install it. I'm not going to go through those steps because I already have that downloaded on my PC. Um, but I will go to the Dolphin emulator to show you um, those particular steps. So we're going to download, and I need to get actually the beginning. When you go to the, the Dolphin emulator, it will ask you about downloading uh, the latest version. When you click on that, it will have the development versions, and if you scroll down, it will have the stable versions. Well, the stable version is over two years old, uh, and there's been a lot of performance enhancements, and there's been a lot of enhancements in the development versions. Um, normally, I would suggest using stable software, uh, but in the case of Dolphin, I would definitely go with the development version. Um, that's what I've been using, and I have not had any issues as far as crashing or anything like that. So we're going to click on the Windows download. It downloads pretty fast because it's pretty small. And then we will open it up. And it opens up into 7-Zip. And Dolphin does not have a uh, automatic installer for the development version. So we need to copy that, the Dolphin x64, into our own folder. Um, you can put it pretty much anywhere. For the sake of this video, I'm going to be throwing it into my documents and I will just drag it over and I think it just went into the wrong place. So I accidentally put it in there. So let's redo this. Let's just drag it there. And now you see we have Dolphin X64. Uh, so to run it, we'll go into that folder. And just to show you what Dolphin is, and to get some of the initial settings set up, we'll double click on Executable. It'll ask you if you want to share information with the Dolphin's developers. So this is for like uh, when it crashes, performance issues, um, and also like what kind of CPU you're running on, uh, that kind of information. So we're gonna help them out. I'm clicking yes, uh, but it's up to you whether you wanna click yes or no there. And so the first thing it's gonna do is gonna look for the ISOs. Um, don't ask me where to get them. In most places it's illegal to download uh, from the internet. Um, the 
legit way to get these is from uh, hacking your Wii with uh, so homebrew and you can download the games from the CD to the uh, SD card and then from the SD card you can copy to the computer. Um, I will not be doing a tutorial for that. I think if you search out on YouTube, other people have done that. Um, but do not ask for the, the ROMs because I don't want Nintendo to be coming after me and closing down my channel. So once you have your ISOs, this is double click and to find the directory that they're in. I actually have mine on my expansion drive under documents and video games. And so then the list of my ISOs come up. Uh, you'll actually notice here for Pikmin 2, I have two of them. The first one is the straight Pikmin 2 game. And the second one is the one that we've hacked and is modified. Um, so some of the settings for Dolphin that you probably want to set right away, uh, under graphics, it'll have you pick which backend to use. Um, depending on what CPU you have, what graphics card you have, um, probably the safest bet is direct is the uh, Direct 3D 12. Uh, I know for my PC the Vulcan one works better. I have an older CPU, uh, an older AMD CPU actually, which is not good for emulation. Um, so when I do Vulcan, it actually puts a lot of the processing power on my graphics card, which is much better. Uh, another thing that you want to check is VSync. Um, so what VSync does is it prevents screen tearing and that's like when you're playing where the top half and the bottom half of the screen get kind of out of sync. Uh, so you definitely want to do that. And it's up to you whether you want to do full screen or not. Uh, with most of the settings, if you hover over the options, it will give you a description of what they do at the bottom. One of the nice things about emulators is enhancements. So the native resolution for the GameCube and for the Wii is very low. And with Dolphin, I mean, you can go all the way up to, to 5K. I'm sure my PC won't be able to do that. Uh, but I've been able to run 1080p, uh, anti-aliasing, that will help you uh, smooth out some of the graphics. Um, so that's usually pretty good. And, uh, you know, if your graphics card can handle it, uh, it's definitely good to set those. If you're finding the game's running slow, uh, you might want to turn that off. Um, so that's it for that. Uh, for the hacks, usually the one thing that I do the GPU texture decoding uh, for the same reason. I have a slow CPU, so anything that I can put on the graphics card definitely speeds it up for me. And under advanced, we're not going to change anything, any of these now um, for the introduction, um, but I will do a video on custom textures and you'll definitely be using the options for the uh, dump textures and the load custom textures. And the next thing that you need to set up is a controller. I actually have a uh, imitation GameCube controller, um, but you can use pretty much any controller. I've used uh, Xbox 360, Xbox One. Uh, I've actually used a Wii U Pro controller, um, and they all they all work fine. Um, but basically, you click on the button that you want it to be, and then you actually hit the button on the controller. So I will just go through these quick. And for like the direction pads, sometimes it will call it like a hat um, or different axis or axes. Uh, we don't need to do anything with the modifier. Um, if your controller 
like moves around a lot, you can actually set the a dead zone so that you don't get drifting. So we'll do the C stick and we'll do the left and the right trigger. And unfortunately, most of the controllers that I've seen, they do not actually have a actual left and right analog. Uh, there's a few GameCube games that actually use that, like the um, Mario Sunshine. Um, so you don't get the kind of precision and emulation that you would if you have a, a real GameCube. And then you can save the profile for that controller if you want to add more, if you want to swap back and forth. Um, so I just saved that one as GameCube. And then just to show you that it works, we'll just go into Pikmin 2. There we see the Pikmin, and we are going into the game. As you can see, it's a much higher resolution than the actual GameCube game. So that is getting the emulator set up. So how do we get to the files to actually hack? Pikmin 2. Um, so for that, we are going to use the GameCube Rebuilder tool. And all the links are going to be down in the description. So the GameCube Rebuilder tool is on this site. Click on manual download. Download. And same thing, it's in a compressed file. And then we are going to create a new folder, and I'm going to do it in Documents. I'm going to create a new folder called Pikmin 2 Hacking. And we'll put the GameCube Rebuilder tool there. So what the GameCube Rebuilder tool does is it will let us access the files that are in that ISO. And to get to those files, we need to open the image. And the image is the ISO file. Um, so it already put me in the folder for my GameCube games. It may not do that for you, and you'll have to search for it. And S3, pick N2, U. That's what my uh, Pikmin 2 USA version game is. And we're going to open it. And then this shows you all the files that are actually in there. So in order to extract the files and to get to them, when root is highlighted, we're going to right click. We're going to export. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to throw it in the documents. And I'm going to throw it in our Pikmin 2 hacking folder. And you can see the green bar. It's going through and dumping all the files. And while it's doing that, I can show you what's actually in there. So um, this is just to give you uh, a little bit of a taste of what is actually in the uh, Pikmin 2 files and some of that we're, that we're going to be hacking. Um, one of the big ones under user, there's different users and uh, Abe is the one where the overworld is. So when we were hacking the overworld and Valley Repose on the Yellow Pikmin channel, this is where we're going to go into Abe, map, tutorial, because that's what Valley Repose is. And then default gen is actually where um, the initial generation of enemies and things like that is. Uh, where like the Pikmin start, where you can do like um, give yourself Pikmin, like blue Pikmin in day one, which normally wouldn't be there. Uh, 
init gen, for example, gives you a bunch of um, enemies and bridges and things like that. Um, so just to give you an idea what's in there, we'll go into the init gen. Um, so there's a whole bunch of stuff that probably doesn't make a whole lot of sense, and which I will go into in the next video. But that is the introduction to Pikmin 2 hacking and emulation. Um, the other ones will assume that you've created this route and work from there. So I hope you enjoyed it and have a good day.